uh, when I used to manage and own uh, the restaurant, the chef needed somebody to sponsor him. Someone shout amen. I didn't really know him like that. Uh, uh, but they had asked me. He was a family man. He was a father of many children, and he wanted to go see his family. And, and at that time, I had made enough money to be able to sponsor somebody. And he asked me, he says, I've asked my family, I've asked everybody, and no one is willing to help me. Uh, uh, the chef said to me, Samuel, are you willing to help me? And without hesitation, without me thinking it, without, I just said, I'll, if, I can, if I can possibly help you, I'll help you. And about eight years ago, I actually sponsored somebody to be able to get their, their papers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone shout amen. amen. So, so I share that with you because what we sow, we're going to reap. What we sow, we're going to reap. What you sow right now, you're going to reap in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Are y'all with me in this place? It's okay. I'm, I'm going to get there in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Put that camera, the one that's not moving, in the mighty name of Jesus. What you sow, you're going to reap in Jesus' mighty name. And one thing, hallelujah, but, but before we move on forward, how many of you remember the crusade? The crusade was only about two months ago. Someone shout amen. In that crusade, listen to me now, we were celebrating our, our, our two-year anniversary. And in that crusade, we went 40 days and 40 nights nonstop. Every night and every day, I had to lead worship and I had to interpret. Now, for anybody who's ever touched a mic, who's ever preached for whatever reason, amen, uh, uh, you know uh, the toll it takes on the body, someone shout amen. It takes a toll on the body, the mind, takes a toll on your, on your voice. Everybody was getting sick at that time. But I said, Lord, I, 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 I'm not going to miss one day in Jesus' mighty name. But I told the Lord this. I said, Lord, I'm going to do this crusade, and I'm not going to miss a day. But what I want you to do in this crusade is give me my house, and, and, and I, want us, I want you to give me the papers. I told the Lord these two things. I'll do this, and I'm going to do it either way. But I want you to give me my house, and I want you to give these papers in Jesus' mighty name. For those who know my wife and I, our honeymoon only lasted about a day and a half. We, 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 we don't know what it is to go and see something. Or My ministry, my life, is Monday Bible study. Tuesday preparing for Wednesday. Thursday preparing for Friday. Thursday and Friday, preparing for the Saturday food distribution ministry. Sunday, completely involved in all ministry. That's my life for the last eight years. That's been my life. I, I know nothing else but that life. I know nothing else. Will. Will knows me. He knows he started with me. That's been my life. I've never asked God for nothing in return. But I said, Lord, I need you to do these two things. Not for me, but for my wife. Why? Because about four years ago, she lost her father. And it's been about three something years where she hasn't seen her mother. So I said, Lord, don't do it for me, but do it for my home. Do it for my wife. And, and, and when I tell you something, church, that to serve the Lord, to really serve the Lord, to really serve the Lord. I'm not talking about just coming to one Sunday morning service. That's good for somebody. But to really serve the Lord, God rewards you. You're not... Uh, when you really serve the Lord, when you really serve the Lord, God rewards you in a way that what you ask for is little, is nothing in his eyes. And that's the truth. And the reason why we had to share this testimony, hallelujah, is because also my wife in those 40 days, she had applied for her job. She didn't share this at all. But we were at that time in really need, in need of money and, and the crusade had started already uh, uh, received a soul show, but she couldn't work. Uh, she had applied for the job, and she wanted to go get her fingerprints. She does uh, CNA and caregiving, and, and she does all that stuff. She's a registered nurse in Mexico, and we're trying to transfer those papers here. But my wife never stops. She never stops. She never stops. And, and um, when the crusade started, she had put in the fingerprints two weeks prior, and it takes about two weeks to finally have the fingerprints come in and have her to start to work. Well, we called two weeks later, and I told her, baby, you got to call because we got to pay these bills in Jesus' name. That's, that's my cardinal mindset. Are y'all with me? That's uh, us men, you got to, you know, one thing I learned, I'm not going to say so much into it, but us men, we, we get mad at our wife. We, you got to give me the money. 
The Lord supplies all of your needs. So I'll save you guys from a fight right now. I'll save you from a fight right now in Jesus' mighty name. You want to know why? Because God supplied my needs without the other income coming in yet in my home. Because God shows you, hallelujah, he supplies your needs in Jesus' mighty name. Now, that doesn't mean that when she don't start working, she got to help. I'm not saying that. There y'all women go. Y'all talking about going on a Ross shopping spree. No, 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 no. Are y'all with me? She said yes back there. But out of, out of over 54 people who sent in the fingerprints to, 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 to start working, we called the lady up, and this lady says, for some, whatever reason, out of those 54, all 52 fingerprints came in. Only two are missing, some other person and your wife's. It went missing. And, 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 and you know what God's purpose behind that? God wanted my wife and I completely every night working in that crusade. Listen, the day, the day on the same day, the, the day after the crusade, the 40 days, listen to me now. She gets a phone call the day after the crusade. And she says, and they say, Sharon, guess what? Your fingerprints have been found. Now you can start to work. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It was the day after the crusade. The day, the next day, they say, we found your fingerprints. You think that's a coincidence? That's God. That's God in Jesus' mighty name. So I share that because, hallelujah, I'm leaving this Thursday. I'm going to be here for the Wednesday midweek service. We have an evangelist, David, amen. Uh, he's a young man of God who's coming up, and, and we got. I, I felt led to have him preach. Uh, this Wednesday, I'm, I'm going to be here, but the following day, I'm leaving. And I believe the reason why I can leave is because I think, I think we're, all, we're all mature enough and disciple enough to be able to do what God has commanded us to do without having the pastor in the house. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? So that Sunday, that, that's that following Sunday, next Sunday, you, we, I, I, we got an amazing preacher and speaker for you. And she's sitting right here in the front row. Minister Michelle. She's going to be preaching the house down. <clears throat> and I know you're not going to miss Sunday, but just in case. But I know you're not. She's going to be preaching again the following Wednesday. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone shout amen in this place. And I'm going to be on the live. I'm going to go to church that Sunday morning. Amen. But I'm going to be, hallelujah, like some of you are with the phone right here. And, and are y'all with me? And making sure I tune in and get the word. Amen. This is the first time, listen to me now. In, in eight years of pastoring, I've never had a Sunday off. Never. I've never had a Sunday off. And I don't plan to have another Sunday. But, hallelujah, the opportunity came up. And we're going to go see, hallelujah. I'm not even going to say her name because she might, she might be on the live right now, hallelujah. Are y'all, but it's going to be a complete surprise, Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. And, and I just encourage you, everybody, nothing is impossible for God. God could not give me this blessing a year ago, two years ago. Why? Because our heart, our attitude, our character wasn't right. Someone shout amen. And I thank the Lord, hallelujah, that his timing is always perfect in our lives. His timing is always perfect. His timing is always perfect in Jesus' mighty name. So if God can do that for somebody, you better believe God's going to do it for you. Someone give a big round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Turn your Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. For all the new faces, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, hallelujah. We love you. One thing that I stopped doing is call, call them out by name. We love you, amen, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we love you. I'm going to move right over here. Don't worry, he'll catch me. We don't got to move in Jesus' mighty name. We're going to take it real slow. Someone shout amen. And I'm going to tell you this right now. We're going to go about 5, 10 minutes over 11. Are y'all with me? So don't be looking at the clock. I'm very aware of the clock. But you're not going to have me for another two weeks. So I'm going to try to squeeze as much as I can. Are y'all with me in this place? Are y'all with me? And then I'm, we're, we're going to call the worship team out. We're going to sing a song. I'm going to pray for you. And then you guys can go and get ready. Uh, uh. For your Valentine's plan, your Super Bowl, whatever that is. Amen. I don't know, you know, glory to Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. But really, I'm very happy and glad to see a lot of new faces in this house. We, we love you, and this is a good church. It's a good church. It's a good church. 
Are y'all with me in this place? I don't care what anybody says. Someone shout amen. It's a good church in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. On our notes, hallelujah. I titled this sermon, Sticks and Stones Will Allow Me to See the Glory. How many of you guys know that, that famous phrase or saying, Sticks and stones may what? Break my bones, but words will never. But I, I'm going to submit to you this morning that these sticks and the stones will not break nothing. They will allow me to see the glory of God. Someone shout amen. They will allow me to see the glory of God. They will allow me to see heavens being open in Jesus' mighty name. A lot of us here, we run from the desert. We run from God, hallelujah, testing us and trialing us in the mighty name of Jesus. But that's where your character is formed. When things are going south, when things are going the way you want them to go, that is where you start to see the glory of God in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Are y'all with me in this place? That is where you see that you're almost at your last limb, that you can barely breathe, that your head is just above over the waters, that the bills, hallelujah, are becoming too much, that the family is too hectic in your home, hallelujah, that your worship life is dry and nothing is moving in Jesus' mighty name. But right in the last second as you're learning to trust in God, God manifests his glory. Someone say hallelujah, God will come at the right time. God will come at the right time in your life in Jesus' mighty name. And the Spirit of God, my assignment in the book of Acts chapter 7, verse 51 through 60, hallelujah. As I was praying and asking the Holy Spirit to give me the word, hallelujah, he took me to the stoning of Stephen. How many of you guys know this story? A lot of us know this story in Jesus' mighty name. Are y'all with me? And, and one thing that I've seen in the body of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, is only when things are going good in someone's life do they say, I see the glory of God. Someone shout amen. It's only when they see that God finally blesses them with a husband or a wife or a job or finances. That is where I see the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. But I may submit to you this morning, hallelujah, that we not only see the glory of God in those good times, hallelujah, but we can see the glory of God in the bad times, in the difficult and trialing times in Jesus' name. I don't know which situation you find yourself in this Sunday morning. I don't know what's, what's, uh, what, what heartache, what, what thing that's that on the inside that nobody knows about is hurting you or breaking you down in Jesus' mighty name because we all got secret thorns in Jesus' name. But I may submit to you this morning, hallelujah, give you another perspective, another view, another lens, hallelujah, view to see that you not only see Jesus in the good times, but you can see Jesus in the difficult and trialing times in your life. In fact, those who are mature and those who have walked with God faithfully, hallelujah, we, we, we've learned that we see the greater glory of God when all hell is breaking loose in our home. We've learned that when all hell is breaking loose in our home, when the enemy is attacking the marriage, the home, the children, instead of us, hallelujah, pulling away, we've learned to press that much more into the things of God in Jesus' mighty name. And in the year of 2024, I want you, hallelujah, to get to a place that you made up in your mind that when things become difficult and challenging, when you don't feel like worshiping, when you don't feel like coming to church, when you don't feel like praying, you know, hallelujah, because all hell is breaking loose, hallelujah. But you know that God is about to manifest his glory in that time and in that season of your life. Someone shout amen. And in the verse 51, the word of God says this. Remember, I have a rule for those who, have, who haven't heard it. If you shout amen, I preach faster. Someone shout amen. If you shout the house down, hallelujah, I get out of your hair faster. Unless you want me to preach a long time, hallelujah. Yeah, I'd like you to preach, then, then I can meet with you after and we'll have another sermon in Jesus' mighty name. But I want to be sensitive to the time. Here we go. This is Stephen, hallelujah. To give you guys some context, it says, here we go. Verse 51, it says, he's speaking to the Pharisees. He's speaking to the Sadducees. He's speaking to those, hallelujah, uh, uh, who are self-righteous. Someone shout amen. We have a lot in the church, a lot of self-righteous folk in Jesus' mighty name. Are y'all with me? He says, hallelujah, underline this. 
the, uh, 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 the stoning of Stephen. Stephen says, you stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. Someone shout amen. Now, for those who understand the Jewish law, hallelujah, every male is to be physically circumcised. Someone shout amen. But, hallelujah, Stephen is saying to these uh, uh, Pharisees and Sadducees, these self-righteous folk, he's saying you might have circumcision under there, but up here, hallelujah, y'all still uncircumcised. Someone shout amen. I don't have time to go much into that. It says, you are like your ancestor. Someone shout amen. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Someone shout amen. You always resist... Or you always reject the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Are y'all with me? Anybody ever seen some stiff-necked people? Just always just angry? You know, if you got a stiff neck, you don't got the best look on your face. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? You're saying you're stiff-necked and your face looks ugly because you resist the Holy Spirit. Someone shout amen. It says you always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors didn't persecute? Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? So if somebody here, if you're being persecuted for self-righteousness, hallelujah, or you're being persecuted because you're doing the will of God, give glory to God. You're not the first and you will not be the last. Someone shout amen. They are, they, they are even killed. They, are, they even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. There's, he's speaking on Jesus. Verse 53. You, ha, you, you who, have, who have received the law that was given through the angels but have not obeyed it. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Now we're going to get to the good part. Someone shout amen. Verse 54. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were what? They were what? Furious. Furious. And gnashed their teeth at him. Where have you heard that word, the gnashing of the teeth? Where have you heard that? It says in the word of God, when you go to hell, you hear voices of people gnashing their teeth. Someone shout amen. So you're like, oh, you're mad, you're furious, hallelujah. You better get that corrected before. I'll tell you right now, there's no angry, furious person in heaven, I'll tell you that. So we got to fix that this morning. Someone shout amen. I can't go more into it, amen. I'm in a good mood, I promise. Verse, hallelujah, verse 55. But Stephen, full, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven. Where did he look up to? Did he look at the people? Did he look at the Sanhedrin? He says he looked up to heaven in the mighty name of Jesus, and he saw the glory of God. Someone shout amen. He saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. And Jesus, underlined this, he's not sitting, but he is standing. Underline that. Someone shout, you got to catch that. What did the word of God say? Jesus is sitting at the what? But here we see, hallelujah, that Jesus is not sitting. He's standing. I'm going to break it down for you in a minute. Someone shout, amen. Are y'all with me? Lord, he ain't sitting. He's standing. Are y'all with me? He's standing at the right hand of God. Verse, verse 56. It says, here we go. Look, underline that, look. He's telling them to look, he said. I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Someone shout amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I can preach this thing down. Hallelujah. Verse 57, here we go. At this, they covered their ears. Hallelujah. Someone shout amen. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices. They all rushed to him. Someone shout amen. Verse 58. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of the young man named Saul. How many guys know who Saul is? Saul is Paul. Someone shout amen. Some of y'all, when y'all ready to throw, throw, throw a rock, y'all take off your, your, your sweater. Y'all, y'all, y'all want y'all, oh, okay, now y'all got to say nothing. Y'all want to get better aim? God, someone shout amen. I'm going to get the pastor, God. I'm going to get the sister, God. Let me take off, let me take off these heels and use them. God, someone shout amen. I wish you can take off, hallelujah, 
your, your code to praise the Lord and go to another level, but y'all quick to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, y'all ain't got to say nothing. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to preach it to you in a minute. Here we go. Verse 59. While, underline this, while they were stoning him, while they were stoning him, while he was being, thro- rocks being thrown at him in Jesus' mighty name. Stephen what? Stephen what? Some of y'all, hallelujah, someone's throwing a stone at you, you throw two stones. Wow. I know she didn't say that about my mama. Wow. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Wow, hallelujah, the, th- the stones are being thrown at him. Stephen is praying. 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 Sticks and stones will allow me to see the glory of God. Stephen was praying while the stones are being thrown at him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody this morning in Jesus' mighty name? Someone give a big round of applause in the house of God. Stephen had an assignment. He had a divine assignment. The Bible says while they were choosing the leaders, they said, let's pick people who are full of wisdom and full of the spirit of God in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, hallelujah, in order for you to see the glory of God, in order for you to see the blessing of God, in order for you to have breakthrough in your life, in the midst of trouble and trials and stoning, hallelujah, you can't be full of anger, you can't be full of rage, you can't be furious, you can't be in the flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. You got to get to a point where you say, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, remove this from me, and you get into your prayer closet, and you get into your word and you say fill me with the Holy Spirit fill me with your word fill me with your presence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ what are you feeding into a lot of us what happens when things start to go sour in our lives instead of feeding into the presence of God instead of being like David to say hallelujah father do what you want but don't take your presence from me we feed into that rage we feed into that anger is because she did this is because he did that is because my father did this is because my mother did this is because a sister in the church did this is because a pastor did this and now how Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. That all hell break loose. Hallelujah. No, you got to be full of the spirit of God. Someone shout amen. We're fighting. Hallelujah. Our battles all the wrong way. We, we, when things happen, we throw the chunk line first and then we'll throw a Bible scripture. Someone shout amen. Let me just give them a piece of my mind. And then I'm going to go pray. Let me just throw, hallelujah, the, my shoe and wah, And then I'll go say I'm sorry. And we want to see the glory. We want to see the hand of God move in our life. We want to see blessing upon blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone shout amen. It's because people, hallelujah, have walked all over me. Well, haven't you prayed that your family will come to the Lord? you got to be the bridge in the mighty name of Jesus. In order for someone to get to one place to another, there's got to be a bridge in the mighty name of Jesus. People have walked all over me. People have doubted me. People have talked about me. But I made a decision. I want to win souls for Jesus. I made a decision. I want the light of the Lord to shine bright in my life in Jesus' mighty name. It's easy. It's easy to love those who love you. It's easy to give a gift to those that gift you in Jesus' mighty name. That's the easy part in the mighty name of Jesus. Now when days in the church, hallelujah, it's become a high school social club. You only hang out with those who agree with you. You only hang out with those you're, 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 you're used to in Jesus' mighty name. And now in the mighty name of Jesus, when you're corrected, hallelujah, when you got, when some man or a woman of God got to tell you the word from the Lord, you don't like it. I made a decision. I'm not, I don't care if I got to preach to one person in this church. I'm going to preach this thing. I, listen, I know 
that it's not the tithes or the offering. I know that it's not people that gives me the anointing on my life or keeps this church running in the mighty name of Jesus. I've learned, hallelujah, that if God before me, then who can be against me in Jesus' mighty name? The giant said, isn't this this little David? He's just a little boy in Jesus' name. The world's going to say you're too little. The world's going to say you're not qualified. The world's going to say you're not anointed enough. But if God before you, who can be against you? In the year of 2024, you got to be full of the Spirit of God. You gotta, we got to get off our phones. Listen, hallelujah. Many of you guys, hallelujah. You see, I love my wife, but it's my job to lead my wife. It's my job, listen, man, to lead my wife. It's my job to lead my wife. So when something comes in my house, or if a certain attitude or mindset comes and I see it and I identify it, I said, that's not Christ-like, let's fix it. But I'm not going to allow this little problem to turn into a big problem. I know what God has anointed us to do. I know that we are world changers, game changers in the mighty name of Jesus. And now was a time to prepare ourselves and not be full of rage, not be full of anger, not be full of unforgiveness, but be full of the spirit of God. There are people that say, you know what, so I won't get hurt again. I'm just not going to talk to people. That is the most anti-Christian Jesus thing to do. I'm, I'm just going to stay quiet. You want God to stay quiet when you're asking him for something? Ah, I'm just going to learn to stay quiet. Can you imagine if Jesus, hallelujah, stayed quiet, didn't go out into the hills to preach and teach the word of God, and Jesus, knowing that there was a Judas in his discipleship class, hallelujah, still took time to go into the house to disciple them and love on them and encourage them and equip them in the mighty name of Jesus. There are somebody here, just because you had one sour apple in, in your walk with God does not mean the whole tree is jacked up and messed up in Jesus' mighty name. You you can't live your life behind a box. You can't live your life behind closed doors. If you don't got people that you're ministering to and being ministered to, then you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Someone shout amen. You know how many times I've been hurt? But every day I said, Lord, don't let my heart be hardened. What you have poured into me, help me to pour into others. Yesterday I got a phone call from a, a very prominent pastor. He says, Pastor Sam, i pastor for over 20 years. He says, can you help me with something? When the man of God called me, I felt so honored. He said, he said here's this young man who can help this man of God who's established with a senior pastor in whatever situation in their church. And I said, Lord, this is you. It has nothing to do with me in Jesus' mighty name. You know why? Hallelujah. Because I'm not going to let bad experiences keep me from doing what God has anointed me to do. And there are people that, God, you have been anointed and called of God to do some great and awesome things. To be able to disciple young women, disciple young men. But because you've had one sour apple, hallelujah, you, you've cut off the whole tree. Someone shout amen. Give a big round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Due to time, I got to go quick. And y'all have me saying amen. Point number one. You are rejected but resilient. Someone shout amen. You are rejected but resilient in Jesus' name. To be resilient is to overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Are y'all with me? You are rejected, hallelujah, but you are resilient in Jesus' name. The Bible says that Stephen says you have rejected or resisted the Holy Spirit. Someone shout amen. In fact, how do I know that? You want to know why? Jesus says, Pharisees, I know that you're not of God because there's hate in your heart. Remember, the Pharisees tell Jesus, how can you be the son of God, the son of man? You're not even old enough, hallelujah. You're not even older than our father Abraham, right? 
How can you be the son of God? We are the true believers and worshipers of God. Then Jesus says, is that true? Then why is it, hallelujah, that I'm serving, I'm loving, I'm doing miracles, I'm helping those who are in need, but all you want to do is kill me? Someone shout amen. And there are people, hallelujah, that they have not come. You have not come to seek the Lord, to see people's lives change, hallelujah, and be touched by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the angels rejoice when a sinner repents. Someone shout amen. If the angels rejoice, what are the church to do? We ought to be rejoicing. And Stephen says, you have resisted or rejected the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. And there's some people that, that you're going through something difficult in your life because certain people make it a living you-know-what for you to enjoy your walk with God. Do you know that there are people that the devil has assigned to be the thorn in your life? To be the rock in your shoe in the mighty name of Jesus? And you want to know why God allows it to keep you humble? God allows it because his grace is sufficient in your life. Because in that thorn is where you're going to see the glory of God. Because you thought that that thorn or you thought that that rock in your shoe was going to kill you. You thought that the giant was going to wipe you out. But then you saw God move in a supernatural way in your life. And you learn not to fear man, but to fear God. Because every blessing that comes in your life is not from man, it's from God. Tell your neighbor, I'm somebody's cup of tea. I'm somebody's Boston Tea Party. I preach real good to some folk. You might not like me, but I'm somebody's Boston Tea Party. Someone shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 8, verse 5 and 7. How many are being blessed? It says here. This is when, this is, this is when uh, the, 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 people of, the people of God are asking for a new king. They, they said this, God is saying this to Samuel. says, they said to him, hallelujah, they said to Samuel, the prophet, they said, you are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, someone shout amen, such as all the other nations have, someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? But they said, give us a king to lead us. And this what? This displeased Samuel, someone shout amen. It was like the Presbyterian church, the poor Presbyterians, hallelujah. The, 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 they don't, uh, the Lord doesn't raise up a pastor. Other people raise up pastors. If you go to the Baptist or the Presbyterian, hallelujah, uh, the Lord doesn't raise up a pastor. There are people who assign pastors, and if they don't like them, they vote and they kick them out. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Thank God how we bind that in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Bible says this displeased Samuel. But this is what the Lord said. So he prayed to the Lord. What did he do? There are people, hallelujah, in order for you to see victory in your life and see the glory of God when, when things displease you, hallelujah, instead of feeding into that anger, feeding into what is displeasing you, you got to learn to pray. A lot of us, hallelujah, we, use, we go to prayer as our last resort in Jesus' mighty name. Pastor, I don't know how to pray. Then come every Friday night. You're going to learn to pray. I can't come Friday. Then jump on the woman's prayer group in Jesus' name. And you're going to learn how to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. There's no excuse why not to have the tools to be equipped to do what God has called you to do. You'll never see the glory of God, the breakthrough of God, the hand of God, until you learn to pray. Until you just humble yourself. You know how I know that? Because the Bible says, Elijah, hallelujah, when he wanted something to be done, he prayed. He wanted there to cease the rain. You know what he did? He prayed. Someone shout amen. And you know, when he wanted the rain to come back, what did he do? He prayed. What did Stephen do, hallelujah, as they're throwing stones at him? He starts to pray. Someone shout amen. So he prayed, and the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you that they've rejected, but they've rejected me. You want to know why Stephen can look up in that Sanhedrin 
and, and, and share the word that says the Lord. Because he knew they were not resisting him or rejecting him. They were resisting the Holy Spirit. They were resisting and rejecting the hand of God for him to come and repent. The problem nowadays, the reason why a lot of pastors and preachers can't preach the way that they need to preach is because every little thing rubs somebody the wrong way and you'll never see them come back. Someone shout amen. But I'm going to tell pastors, those who are online, their blood is on your hands if you don't share what thus says the Lord. According to the book of Ezekiel, if you want to see the glory, you have to pray. You have to pray. Someone give a big round of applause. I got to go quick. Someone shout amen. If you're, if you're a sister in this house and you, and you still don't know how to pray, find the leader, the woman of God. And I'll point you to her right here. Get, get connected to this woman right here in front, the white. She came in white because for the Lord knew I was going to call her out. Can you teach me how to pray, sis? Someone shout amen. Get connected, hallelujah, with elders in the church. Get connected with leaders in the church. Point number two, hallelujah, in, the, in this dry valley I shall prophesy and things will come to life. Someone shout amen. In this dry valley I shall prophesy, prophesy and things shall come to life. In the book of Ezekiel 37 verse 1 through 5 it says, the Lord, the Lord and the angel shows, shows the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and he set me in the, in, in the middle of the valley and it was full of what? Let's read it again. The hand of the Lord was what? The hand of the Lord was what? The hand of the Lord was what? The Bible says Stephen was full of what? He was full of the Holy Spirit. Someone shout amen. Then the angel, hallelujah, God himself says, the prophet says, the hand of the Lord is on me. Stephen says he is full of the Holy Spirit. Someone shout amen. I'm going to ask you, hallelujah, what hand is on you? What spirit is on you? What thing is leading you? Someone shout amen. amen. What thing is leading you to react the way that you react? Oh, y'all, I'm getting it in the mighty name of Jesus. There are people that want to see the glory, want to see the fire, want to see breakthrough, want to see properties, want to be able to preach to the nations, want to be able to sing the house down and have the Holy Spirit come down in Jesus' mighty name. But the problem is, is what are you full of? The hand of God was on Ezekiel. Listen. When the hand of God is on you, listen to me now. When, the, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it don't matter which dry season you're in in Jesus' name. I'm so sick and tired. It's just not my, the devil. It, make it your season. Make it your season. Listen, it's because, it's because, Pastor, I'm just, my, whole, my, my whole house, hallelujah, my Lord, is Jersey Shore 2.3. Everybody's drinking and smoking. Everybody in my, everybody, all my co-workers, they got a bunch of Stanleys and joints in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody's smoking around me. Everybody's drinking around me. The Bible says Ezekiel was in the middle of the valley and there was dry bones all around him. I'm going to give a big shout in the mighty name. And the, pro the prophet, oh, sh here we go. He led me back and forth amongst them. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? He wasn't avoiding, hallelujah, the stones. He wasn't avoiding the valley. He was walking amongst them in Jesus' name. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? God is not telling you to go into a closet and never come out and then wait for his return in Jesus' mighty name. Someone shout amen. You got to be the light in the mix of darkness. You got to be able to walk in those dry bones. 
You got to be able to walk in that dry family. You got to be able to walk though your children are drinking and smoking and staying up all night. You got to be a mother that walks into that dry situation, that goes into that room, that takes some oil, 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 oil and you anoint the pillow, and you anoint the house, and you anoint your husband, and you anoint your wife, and you anoint your children. You got to stop running away from the valley or every dry thing. You got to be full of the Spirit of God and go anoint your home. It's because my wife makes it impossible for me to come to church, Pastor. You still go to work and your wife is just as bad. It's because my husband uh, makes it impossible. You still go to work in Starbucks even if he has the same character and attitude. Someone give a big round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me, let me, let me. All hell is breaking loose and you're over there at the Tierra Mia's uh, shop. Let me get a cafe cubano and add some chai teas to that if you can in Jesus' name. I need, a, I need a coffee to, you need Jesus in prayer to relax you. Someone shout amen. Don't forget the chai teas and mix it a little bit for the bottom. You got to learn to release the word of God. The reason why Stephen was able to look into the face of the Sanhedrin, he was full of the spirit of God. And he said, thus says the Lord. He started to prophesy. He started to release the word of God in their life in Jesus' mighty name. I don't know about you, hallelujah, but I can, I've come to a place where I can walk over these dry bones. And these dry bones don't, I kick them out the way in Jesus' name. If you like soccer so much in FIFA, kick those dry bones out the way. Kick that dry worship out the way. Kick that dry attitude out the way. Someone shout amen. Give a round of applause. I had somebody say to me, it's because, Pastor, I don't like their chicken. It's too dry. I said, well, if you don't like that and it's dry, your attitude is too dry. You got to fix that. Talk about you don't like dry chicken. We don't like your dry attitude. We still put up with you. You ain't got to say nothing. And shout amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and he says here, we're almost done. It says, and he said to me, prophesy to the dry bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Someone shout amen. Listen, in the year 2024, you got to learn to prophesy the word of God. You have to say, listen, problem, listen, bones, hear the word from the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. How are you going to get the word of God? Come to church. Come to Bible study. Take time in the scriptures in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And it says, this is what the sovereign Lord says, I will make breath enter you and you will come to life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Point number three, we got to go quick in Jesus' mighty name. Here we go. The heavens will be open and you will see what others can't see. Someone shout amen. I said hallelujah. In the midst of stones being thrown at you, in the midst of sticks being thrown at you, in the midst of terrible situations, you will see the glory of God. You will see the heavens being opened when no one else can see it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone shout amen. There's some things that God has only called to reveal to you and not to them. I think a lot of times we waste a lot of time trying to impress people, trying to, hallelujah, fix other people. Or trying to get people to see what God has only showed you. And God is telling me to tell somebody, hallelujah. He's showing that to you with a plan and a purpose in your life in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 9 to 15. How many here are being blessed this morning? It says here, here we go. I don't know, it just says, about noon the following day, as they were on their journey approaching the city, the city, Peter went up on the roof to what? What did Peter go up and do? He went up on the roof to pray, not to take a selfie or a, I'm here and you know what, I don't know where. He went to pray, someone shout amen. It says, 
he became hungry and wanted something to eat. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Let me ask you right now, what are you hungry for? 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 Someone shout amen. He said, here we go. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. Someone shout amen. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down uh, 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 to the earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told them, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. And here we go. The voice spoke to him a second time. It says, do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Why is this important? Why is poor? Because, hallelujah, the Jews believed that Jesus would never receive the Gentiles. Someone shout amen. Who are the Gentiles? You and I are the Gentiles. The Jewish people, the Sadducees, believed that they were the only nation and the only people that were the people of God. Someone shout amen. And the Bible says that while Peter was hungry, and while Peter prayed, he went into a trance, and in that trance, he saw the heavens being opened. Do you want to know why there are some things that haven't shifted or moved in your life? It's because you haven't received revelation from God. Someone shout amen. There are certain revelations that will not be known to anybody else but you, hallelujah, because you have prayed, because you made a decision to seek the Lord as they were stoning Stephen, hallelujah. Stephen saw, hallelujah, the heavens being opened in the midst of trial and tribulations, hallelujah. I'm mean, going to prophesy to somebody, you might be going through a difficult and a challenging season in your life, but God is about to open up the heavens. God is about to give you revelation. God is about to give you the tools that you need to overcome the thing that you're dealing with. Someone shout amen. We need revelation. We need the rhema word in our life. We need, thus says the, word, the Lord, in word in my life. Every time I pray and every time I'm in scriptures, the Holy Spirit gives me another teaching that I've never seen before. That's rhema, that's revelation. But you gotta pray. It don't matter if you're, the Bible says Stephen was being stoned, and instead of looking at the people, instead of looking at the Sanhedrin, you know who he was looking? He was looking up. If you want the heavens to be open in your life, if you want blessings and breakthrough in your life, you got to learn to start looking up. Stop looking at your problem. Stop looking at the things that are going around you. You have to learn to go look up and trust in God in Jesus' mighty name. How many times did a pastor or a preacher or an evangelist have to tell you in Jesus' mighty name? When you look up, you're coming to church. When you look up, you're coming to Bible study. When you look up, you're coming to woman's discipleship. When you look up, you're coming to Wednesday midweek service. When you look up, you're coming to Sunday morning service. When you look up, you're telling your friends, I'm not going out tonight. I'm going to prayer night in Jesus' mighty name. When you look up, you're park with you i'm not gonna go there with you i gotta get into the presence of god you gotta start looking up last point and we're done i encourage you to go back on my facebook or youtube to listen to the whole sermon because i know some words hallelujah you're gonna catch this later someone shout amen last point and we're done we are no longer fragile but filled with power. Someone shout amen. You want to know, hallelujah. Stephen, the Bible says, as he was being stoned, he looks up. And to many others, he was in his most vulnerable place in his life. Because he's about to see death in Jesus' mighty name. 
But one thing that I love about Stephen, it says he's not looking at these men. He's not looking how big the stone is. He's looking at Jesus Christ standing as the heavens are open. Why was Jesus standing and he's not sitting? You want to know why? Because Jesus was in a position and waiting for the people to repent. And he was still giving them an opportunity to repent in Jesus' mighty name. He's no longer sitting in a place of authority. He says he's standing. Why? Because he was still giving the Sanhedrin and certain people time to repent and to give their lives to the Lord. The same thing that Jesus is doing with us here this morning. He's standing, hallelujah, at the right hand of the Father, waiting to see if you're going to repent and, and turn your, your, your lifestyle choices to live according to the word of God. Someone shout amen. As the worship team comes up, don't worry about the time. Who's coming in? How many have been blessed this morning? Give a round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus. If there are some things that you don't understand, remember this. The Apostle Paul says, I couldn't give you meat. I got to give you milk because some of us are still carnal. Someone shout amen. You, you got to get into the Bible studies. You got to come to church. You got to get in prayer in Jesus' name. Last point. And it says here, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 through 10. How many here are with me? Here we go. It says, we now have this light shining in our hearts. Here we go. But we ourselves are like a fragile clay jar containing this great treasure. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? The Bible says we are like fragile clay jars. Remember, I'm fragile, but I am filled with the power of God. Someone shout amen. How many here? I'm fragile, but I am filled with the power of God. Someone shout amen. And it says here, this makes it clear. Here we go. That our great power is from God. Someone shout amen. amen. This makes it clear that I'm fragile. That our power comes from God. Someone shout amen. amen. Some, uh, it don't matter, hallelujah, where you're at. Your power comes from God. Someone shout amen. Here we go. We are pressed on every side by trouble. Someone shout amen. But we are not crushed in Jesus' mighty name. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. Someone shout amen. We are persecuted, hallelujah, but not abandoned in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are struck down, hallelujah, but we are not destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. Someone shout amen. Let's stand to our feet. Sticks and stones will allow me to see the glory of God. Point number one. We are rejected 